Today, we're gonna to be talking about the new SBD-SX Pro, the long-awaited update to Roland's flagship sampling pad. The new and improved SBD-SX Pro has a lot of features that will have a lot of drummers very, very excited. Now, I personally have been using the SBD-SX for almost 10 years now, and I have to say, I'm very, very excited for this new release because it addresses the biggest limitations that the previous one had. We now have expanded trigger inputs, we have additional audio outputs, and a host of brand new features that make this a powerful tool for the working musician. All right, so let's check out what's included in the box. This video is sponsored by Sweetwater, so massive thank you to Sweetwater for sending over this unit for me to unbox and check out. All the gear that I talk about today will be linked below. These are affiliate links, so if you want to help out the channel with no additional cost to yourself, check them out at Sweetwater. With that said, let's check out what's in the box. Wow, very similar size to the previous SPDSX. Slightly heavier, I would say. I think this is about 10 pounds or so, but very similar to the previous one. And then here we've got the mounting clamp. This is sold separately, but you're definitely gonna want one of these. This is the actual Roland one, I'll link that below. There are third-party ones available as well. I like to mount it on a cymbal stand. I usually just take this top piece off. The first thing you'll notice is the nice big LCD screen, which is now color, much higher resolution than the previous one, so you can get a lot more detail and a lot more information. Right now, I've got it plugged into a DI. This is typically what you would plug into at a venue, and then I'm going from the DI into my laptop, which should, in theory, be recording right now, so let's see if we get any sound. So I'm just gonna plug my headphones in so that I can hear what you're already hearing. I think there's some sort of dance groove happening here. A very good thing to have is a headphone extension. Oh, oh. Also, very nice touch that I'm noticing now is there are two different samples on this pad. One is only being played at low volumes and one, a different one is being played at high volumes. So that's a new feature. That's gonna help with ghost notes, right? We got some 80s stuff. Ooh, I like that snare. That's an acoustic kit. Ooh, okay, all right. We didn't talk about this yet, but the sensitivity on these top shoulder pads, woo, I'm playing so quiet. Greatly, greatly improved. One of the issues with this thing is you, you gotta hit this pretty hard to fire whatever's on that pad. I've had many cases where I've hit those top three pads and I missed a cue or a loop didn't come in because I didn't hit it hard enough. So I gotta whack those. But on this, wow, I am playing so quiet. Major upgrade right there that I know a lot of people will be excited about. Okay, so here's a case where it would actually be really nice to connect an external pedal for the kick. This is a Roland KD7. That's this part here. Comes with this funny looking beater. And then to take advantage of all the eight trigger outputs, you're gonna want a bunch of these. These are Y splitters. So it goes from a stereo signal to two monos. There's a link below where you can find these. So I'm gonna plug one of these in and it's a kick, great. Of course, now with eight of those, you can plug all kinds of stuff in. 
You've also got an input for a hi-hat or expression pedal. So that's with my foot now. Open, closed. Very happy to have some sort of pedal input here which will allow you to control effects and hi-hat. So with that in mind, I think now's a good time to hop on the kit, do a little comparison of the two SBD SXs, and um, we'll get the show on the road. So here we have the two SBD SX models. We've got the old SBD SX and the new SBD SX Pro. If you're a pro, you want this one. So some of the obvious differences, we now have eight trigger inputs on this one. This one only has four trigger inputs and I have maxed that out many, many, many times. So honestly, the added trigger inputs is probably the number one feature that I wanted from this. We also have additional audio outputs. So we now have six fully assignable audio outputs. You can route audio from anywhere within the SBD SX to any of those six channels, which is very, very useful. On the old model, we had four channels, although those were technically linked as two stereo pairs. So the only way you really get four channels is by hard panning things left and right. Whereas on the SBD SX Pro, you can configure those six outputs any way you'd like. Both of these have audio in. One difference is that this has two mono audio in jacks, so a left and a right. This one has one stereo jack, so you'll need the Y splitter if you intend to run two different cables into it. But it will come in as stereo, even though it's just one jack. In addition, we now have 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which is huge compared to the two gigabytes on this very, very old model. Finally, you now have additional audio inputs and outputs via USB. So if you connect via your laptop, you can now have 12 channels of inputs and eight channels of output. And honestly, we could stop right there and I would be pretty happy because those were the biggest limitations of the SBD SX. But there is a lot more that comes with this new model. So one of the major updates that I've been looking forward to is that you can actually sync tracks and loops to the click now, which is, that is a major, major game changer. So in the past, you had to perfectly hit your track in time. This is how you used to have to trigger loops. You have a click and then you have to hit the loop exactly in time. Three, four. The problem is if you're a little bit early or a little bit late, let's see what that sounds like. Now it's like an anticipation, not an intentional one. So now in the new version, I should be able to sync this to the track so I can hit that pad anywhere in that last measure and it's gonna start on a downbeat. Oh, I'm pumped about this. Here we go, click track. Let's hit it anywhere. Wow, all right, that's amazing. Honestly, <laughs> that might be worth it. Like the price tag is pretty steep on this thing, but that feature alone might honestly be worth it. Another one of the new features useful for tracks is that you can now do some very cool things with what's called pad sequences. The pad sequence allows you to cycle through a series or sequence of pads in a predetermined order by hitting a single pad. So this could be like A section, B section, C section. For example, there's my first sample. Then I have an A section. And then I have a B section. And then we actually go back to the A section, which is stored on this same pad. So I don't need a whole new pad for the second A section. We just go right back to this one. And then I can see on the screen, okay, my next sequence is pad five. That's the solo. And that's what this sounds like right here. So the SPD SX Pro is extremely powerful as you've seen when it comes to backing tracks. Now the SPD SX Pro is designed to save you time in a lot of different ways. One of the ways that this can save you time is automatic file conversion. So we all know the struggle of having to get everything into the one format that this accepts, which is 44.1K 16-bit WAV or AIF files. Here, 
you can drop just about anything on it and it'll work. So MP3s, you can drop different sample rates, different bit rates. Also, when you import from a USB drive, you can now browse the folders, which is very handy as opposed to this one where you had to have everything in the root folder. So you can now organize your samples in folders like a normal human being, and then you can still browse them from within the SPD SX Pro. A couple basic things, but that make a big difference in my life as a working musician are the expanded number of kits. You can now store 200 different kits, which is twice as many as the old one. If you are working with a lot of different musicians, a lot of different groups, and you wanna keep all of their stuff saved on there, you will run out at a certain point. Now you got a lot more headroom to play with. In addition, set lists are greatly improved. So what was called kit chains on the old SPD is now called set lists here. And those can be configured to up to 32 steps. So that's like if you're playing a concert, you can have 32 different sounds for the night. I play quite a few gigs where there are multiple sounds or multiple kits per song. So here having 32 steps as opposed to 20, very much appreciated. Generally speaking, the layout of everything is familiar. If you're used to using the SBDSX, I was able to hop in without reading the manual and do most basic things. These buttons on the right are all the same, except we've now got the additional value knob. Down at the bottom, we now have six buttons instead of three, so that's really helpful. You know, these change depending on what screen you're on. Also, for editing, you've got these new pad edit knobs, which are insanely helpful. I, I can't stress that enough. So for example, let's, let's imagine this scenario. You're at a gig, you're doing sound check, and you've just been informed by the front of house engineer that your snare drum is a little bit too loud and piercing. Could you please turn that down by about six dB? So how long do you think it's gonna take to change the volume on this versus this? Let's have a race. Ready, go. Done. Ah. On the SPD SX, you just push this button, which activates these knobs, and you turn it down. And I can actually see visually, layer volume is now at negative 6 dB. So it actually tells me that on the screen. Now on the SPD SX, we don't have decibels displayed here. We just have a range of one to a hundred. And we have to basically guess how much is six decibels. I don't know. You're like, is that good enough? I have no idea. Now, let's imagine another scenario. So you're at rehearsal, things are going pretty well, but now the artist is not happy with your snare drum sound. It's a little bit too bright for their taste, and so they want something a little bit lower and deeper. So on the SPD SX Pro, all you have to do is use this knob to turn the pitch down, and you can very easily... And that's all available at your fingertips within seconds. On the SPD SX, <laughs> that would be a whole other story. So we would first have to go into the menu. You can do it, but you go to the menu. Look at any quick menu, and you have to do wave pitch, and then we're gonna select. And now we have a lower drum, a little bit lower, but not nearly as low as this. We're talking about a lot of time that I'm wasting and you know potentially wasting other people's time and money while I'm trying to fix this thing. Whereas here, you need to adjust the volume or the pitch. Do it all right here with the touch of a knob. Now, if you push this select button again, we're now in transient editor mode. So this is brand new. You can actually add a little bit of transient or attack onto the beginning of that note. So if I slowly turn this dial, you can hear that it's adding a lot more attack, a lot more brightness to the beginning of the note. Or you can go the opposite way and actually remove some of the transient. A very soft attack. And then you've got a second knob for the transient release. So that just adds like a little bit of thickness, I guess, to the transient. It's hard to describe exactly what it's doing. To me, it feels Perhaps like adjusting your snare wires on a snare drum, just loosen that and get a little bit fuller, longer snare rattly sound. Just kind of thickens it up for me, as opposed to nothing. And you can adjust all of that very quickly right here using these knobs. Another really great feature is that we now have the ability to fade in or fade out a sample. So this is separate from the transient editor, which I just showed. 
Likewise, you can adjust the decay. And by the way, you now have this value knob, which is very handy. I actually didn't even know this was there until yesterday. So I went like three days without even realizing this knob was here, but it's very helpful. So basically whatever you're selected on in the menu, you can adjust the value using this value knob. So there's a very short decay. So I can easily adjust the length and the attack of a sample. We also now have an individual EQ for every single pad. And not only every single pad, but every layer of that pad. So you've got independent EQ for every single sound that you're playing on the SPD SX Pro. All right, let's talk about the click track. We now have a subdivided click. That's huge, so you wanna turn the eighth note up. You can do that. Also have 16th and triplet. I'm a big fan of using subdivided clicks, especially when playing with electronics. That's a very useful feature for me. You can also now change the click time signature. So if you wanna have it in three or five or seven, you can do that here. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And you can do different time signatures all the way up to nine. Maybe not designed for people to do a lot of odd time signatures, but it is better than nothing. So that's nice. Other improvements include the ability to start the click by hitting a pad. So if you've got a backing track, you can program that pad to start the click as well. And you've also got the ability to do what's called a sample delay now, which is you can start a sample after a certain number of beats. So for example, if you wanna do a count off, you can hit your pad, starts the click for four beats, and then immediately after those four beats, your backing track will come in. And finally, you now have the ability to use custom click sounds. Now, the SPD SX Pro has a ton of built-in sounds, a lot of different options for your click, but if you wanna import your own sound, you can do that as well. Now, with the custom click, you can do this in one of two ways. One is that you have a single sample that's going to be your click sound. You cannot differentiate between your accent sound and your subdivision sounds. You can't have multiple samples, but if you wanna have your custom cowbell, you can do that, and that's your click. The other option is that you can insert a custom loop, and that would sound like this. Just keep in mind that if you use a custom click loop, you do unfortunately no longer have the ability to sync your stuff to the click. All things considered, the click is greatly improved here, and all of that is customizable on a kit-by-kit -kit basis. MIDI is another area where we have improvements. For starters, you now have three knobs instead of two, which can send MIDI control change data. You can also send MIDI CC via your foot pedal, your expression pedal or hi-hat pedal. And you now have a lot more control over the kinds of notes that you send. So you're now able to choose the velocity that you send when you do a fixed velocity pad, meaning previously, if you turned dynamics off, it would just send 127 velocity. Now you can actually tell it if you want it to be a different value. And you can also adjust the note length, which is very useful for some situations where you're triggering things in a laptop. One thing, which is kind of a small thing, but that I very much appreciate is we now have the note names in addition to the note numbers. So you can now see that MIDI note number eight is a G sharp or whatever it might be. This is very useful information when you're communicating with software like Ableton Live. And another feature that I'm absolutely loving is you now have real-time monitoring of your triggers. So you can go in and actually see the velocities that are being sent. And so now when you make adjustments to say your trigger threshold, your dynamic curves, you can actually see in real time the effect that those settings have on your triggers. One thing I haven't talked much about is the lights. You can see I've got the tape here. I tried to avoid it, but it gets very dark on stage. So I've got the fluorescent tape here, which you don't need on this new one because you've got all of these colored lights, which are totally customizable. At first, I was kind of skeptical, not skeptical, but I just wasn't that excited about the lights. I thought, okay, yeah, big deal. But I've been very surprised at how much I've actually been using the different colors to color code things. So my red one is kind of the pad that triggers everything. The yellow is loops. The blue are phrases that just play once and then they're done. And then these teal greenish lights here indicate that I have sounds here available to play. 
So that was something I was pleasantly surprised by. Not only can you customize the colors and make them look cool, however you define cool, I've also been really enjoying color coding them for the purpose of remembering where things are. On the note of screens, you now have the ability to add a screensaver, which is a nice touch. You can also add a custom image as your screensaver. So if you wanna have you know, a picture of your dog or whatever, you can do that. And also, I found this very helpful. If you go to system info, there's a button for the manual and that brings up a QR code where you can scan and get the manual right there on your phone. Another really great feature that you have is that you can now fast forward and rewind through longer samples. I can just, very quickly fast forward through this. Check out things to see if there's a problem in the middle of the track without having to start from the very beginning and listen to all four minutes of the song. The Wave browser here is actually quite nice, but what's really cool is you can filter by tag. So Sungazer, that's my band. Anything that has to do with Sungazer, I can click that tag and filter. And then right away there, I've got all of my stuff. I can also add additional tags to filter. Let's say I want all Sungazer samples that are also click tracks. And then here we'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, like basically 10 waves that correspond to both of those tags. It does mean you have to be kind of aware of that and tagging things as you go, as you add sounds. But I think in the long run for organizational purposes, that would be very, very helpful. Loading and backing up stuff is way faster than it was on this one. So previously, if I had to back up or load the entire SBD, it would take about half an hour. Here, it's much faster. I backed up everything in about three minutes and I believe it was like twice as much data as this thing can even hold. 30 minutes to back up two gigabytes versus three minutes to back up four and a half. So it's, I guess, like over 20 times as fast. Now, something I'm very excited about is you now have the ability to save and load a single kit. So I've actually made this mistake once before where I tried to uh, load a single kit onto somebody else's SPD and I accidentally overwrote their entire SPD SX with all of my kits and settings. That is something you no longer have to worry about. You can save a single kit and then easily load that one kit onto another SPD SX Pro. And you now have a lot more control via the laptop to adjust anything on your SPD SX. So yesterday I actually went through the entire process of setting up the SPD-SX Pro for my upcoming tour in Europe. And it was a, a very smooth experience, I would say, moving back and forth between the two. So some things end up being easier on the SPD because you can just hit a pad and then you're automatically selected on that for editing. But other things like dragging and dropping wave files from my computer, very fast, very easy. You know, the old wave manager, you could do some basic things, but it was slow. It was kind of clunky. Here, you can adjust almost anything from the SPD SX app. There are a few like random options and menu items that are only on the device itself, but you can do pretty much anything there. So all your like volume, pan, pitch, your effects, your output routing, all of that can be configured on the laptop or on the device itself. There are two more things I wanna talk about. The first is effects. So you now have 53 different effects to choose from, which is about twice as many as we had before. And just in the time that I've spent with this device, I would also say that the quality of the effects is also improved. So there's some very nice reverbs, a lot of really great distortions. And there's some brand new effects that we didn't have before. So for example, I'm really enjoying these lo-fi effects. So there's a lo-fi compressor, which is really cool. And then we've also got things like a bit crusher, which I would have loved to have on the previous SPD. So for effects, you have two different kinds. So you have the master effect, which is applied to all sound coming out the master left and right. And then you have what were previously known as kit effects, which are now called multi effects and confusingly abbreviated to MFX. So MFX is not master effect. It took me a while to figure that out. So you have the master effects and the multi effects, which are abbreviated to MFX. Either way, the MFX are kit effects and you can have up to four multi effects on each kit, 
with the caveat that each pad can only go through one of those four effects. So you can now have four multi effects per kit as opposed to two on the previous SPDSX. And then in addition to that, you have the master effect, which is applied to all sound coming out the master left, right. In addition to the master effect, you also have a master EQ, a master compressor, and an additional sidechain compressor. Right, so you can really hear when I hit the kick drum that that backing track gets tucked away in the background. On the left, we now have one master effect knob. And so that's one less than we had before, but we've traded that for two pad edit knobs. And the pad edit knobs are not only used for things like volume and pitch, you can configure this to do many, many different things. So for example, I can control effects using these knobs. You can also use them to select the master effect, for example. And that's something you're probably gonna need to do because you no longer have the buttons here for the master effects, these filter delay, short loop and FX buttons, which honestly is a little bit of a bummer. If I had to say there's one thing that I prefer on this older model, it's these four buttons right here. That's the only thing that I'm like, ah, I don't know. It's not something you really need if you know that, okay, this kit needs a filter and this other kit needs a reverb and you can figure that all ahead of time that it's no problem on this one. Here, this I've found just having these buttons that say filter, delay, short loop on it is very convenient for improvising. So I slightly miss that here for improvisational scenarios. So that is honestly my one and only complaint, not even complaint, but just like a wish list. I kind of liked it better here for the master effects. That being said, in every other way, the SPD SX Pro is far superior when it comes to effects. And I do think it would be possible to change this in a firmware update by repurposing some of those buttons at the bottom. So Roland, if you're listening, I have some thoughts on how you might be able to accomplish that. All right, so that leaves us with one feature we haven't touched on yet, which is sampling. Now on the SPD SX Pro, you do still have the ability to sample, meaning you can run audio into the SPD and record that in real time and then assign that to different pads. In this case, I have this SPD SX going into the SPD Pro via the audio in. So it's now in standby. As soon as I hit this sound, it's gonna record. There we go, and then stop. And then I can assign it immediately to a pad, let's say pad eight, execute. And now I've got the same sound on my SPD. So there's the sample that we just sampled. How's that for a good use of a sampling pad? And that brings us to the big question. Should you buy the SPD SX Pro? For me personally, this is a massive upgrade in a lot of ways. Even just having the additional trigger inputs and the extra audio outputs, a little extra storage, that already solves my biggest problems with this one. And in addition, it has a lot of stuff that I didn't even know that I wanted until I have it now, which is the ability to sync things with the click, to do all this crazy stuff with backing tracks. In terms of a tool that will help you get gigs and do better at those gigs while saving you time and headaches, all of that is so much easier and faster here than it was with this. Now, the big question, is it worth the price tag? It is about $1,200 US. It's a lot of money, I realize. Personally, I think the price is fair and that's honestly exactly what I expected it to be. Uh, you know, I watched the entire Roland video about this thing and I'm thinking, okay, this one costs 800 thereabouts. So that's what I paid for it back in 2013. And this one has significantly more features. I think 1200 is a fair price for what it offers in addition to this. Because when I consider the amount of value I've gotten out of this, not, not only artistically and musically, the kinds of things I can do, but like the actual monetary value, if we're gonna be frank and talk about you know, using this as a working musician. It's a big investment, but it's something that paid for itself many times over, over the course of the last 10 years. 
So are there any things that I wish this did that it doesn't? I think the only big thing is the master effects buttons. I do miss those. And I do think Roland, if you're listening, you could repurpose some of these buttons to fill that need in a firmware update. I don't know. Overall, this is far and away a massive upgrade over its predecessor. I think in this category of like a drum pad thing that you hit and it makes a sound and you can do the backing tracks and all the click stuff. I think this is hands down the best one out there. I think before that, even the predecessor was the best among the competition. And there's a reason that everybody uses this one. And this new one is significantly better than the old one. Those are my thoughts. You can find links to the SBD SX Pro on Sweetwater. Those are affiliate links. So if you want to support the channel at no extra cost to you, you can do that by using any of the links below. Sweetwater is my favorite place to buy music gear. I've been buying a ton of stuff from them for our tours recently. Cables, microphones, DIs, you name it. They have great customer service, they ship fast, and they ship with candy. So what's not to like? So thanks again to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching.